Hi, everybody. I'm finally getting around to film the intro. You'll see at the beginning of the clip that I talk about how I hadn't filmed an intro yet. Um, but I am now. So, uh, welcome to my Mermay series. It's been a bit since you see my face. Uh, or maybe not. I don't know the order I'm editing all my videos in. God, I promise my face is not this much darker than my chest. It's just the way the light shines. <laughs> and in the fact that I have my hair over all of my terrible acne. But, um... Uh, yeah, so it's been a bit. My friend gave me a haircut. I dyed a bit of my hair. I'm feeling it out. I kind of miss my long hair, but life goes on. Anyways, this is the start of my mermaid series. Uh, I will be doing four or five, depending on what I get around to. Watercolor illustrations of my Mer People series. Um, let me just show you like this. Uh, this is a failed version, which I talk about in the rest of the video. Uh, this is the failed version with the color palette idea that I had on it. But uh, yeah, I'll, this week I'll be doing beta fish. Uh, these videos probably go up in like June, <laughs> so you won't uh, you won't see these the videos for a while. But uh, the first week is a beta fish, and then I will be doing a whale shark, a koi fish, a lantern fish, maybe a clown fish. I'm still deciding on kind of what I want to do. Uh, throughout the videos, I will talk about my design process for each and every fish and if anybody would like I could also make a short video talking about my design process for my merfolk in general. I do have a mermaid OC or a merfolk OC folk, folk OC uh, that I've had for a while and she's more based on a amalgamation of fish but the colors the colors for these fish are going these merfolk are going to be very much based on their the actual fish counterpart. Whereas she is not. Uh, I'll put a picture here. I don't have a name for her yet. And she's still going through redesigns. I kind of want to make her merfolk royalty. But if anybody would like, I can make a little video talking about how I design my merfolk and why I make the decisions I make. For example, fins on the arms, gills on the neck, anything like that. Uh, maybe I'll make like a short TikTok or something. Other than that, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy. I am working on my mermaid piece. As you can see, I have already started. I got into the zone. I forgot to film. So this is my beta fish design. Let me grab the... I'll show off the sketches. Since we're sitting here, we got... This is... I think... Do I have stuff on the previous page? Yes. So... Let me walk you through the design process before we get into it. So basically I wanted to do a beta fish for my first mermaid fish and I wrote down a few things about the beta. So, ooh, hello, focus. Okay, so basically what I wrote down is that I know I want them to be dark purple with like a red orangey contrast. Uh, the shape of their tail is referred to as a half moon. Uh, it's a three-part tail. They're mostly from Southeast Asia, and I picked Thailand for a lot of the inspiration for the stylistic choices. They, uh, typical Thailand fashion is to cover up the shoulders and knees, because, you know, fish don't have knees. Uh, in Bangkok, they wear very nice clothing, so I wanted to make it, her look very, not rich, but upscale. Yeah, that's the word I use. Modest, and I wanted her hair to be up, because I wanted... To have that Thai influence. So first I started drawing off kind of a human face to give me an idea of where I was going and then I wrote some conversions <laughs> for what that would translate into as a fish. And so this is the base design that I got. Big old back fin, you know, for the three-part tail uh, and then the another part of three-part tail down here but in actually three parts. The arm fins and some gills and and then you go to the next page, and we have the full design sketched out. Betas have really big pupils and really big eyes, so I kind of wanted to do that. I probably won't put a too much shine on it, just because I want to emphasize how big and black the eyes are. I wanted her to have sharp teeth, because betas are, well, their actual name is a Siamese fighting fish, so I wanted her to be aggressive. This was the initial first pose, but I thought it was too subdued. 
So I started experimenting with other poses and I kind of came up finally with this. And I thought it was nice and aggressive enough and I wanted to sharpen up her claws and really like bend them to make an aggressive pose for her. Because I want to communicate again that aggression that betas have. Uh, so that's what we're going with. I don't know if I already stated. I figured out how to turn off the autofocus so that the video won't be like doing that, <laughs> which you'll see in my previous videos. And the way I do that is I actually just put the exposure and it locks autofocus. So I'm just adjusting this a little bit. And from this point on, it'll be sped up. By the way, at this point, I haven't recorded the actual intro for the video. So the intro seems a little bit different than what I'm recording now. That's why. But, uh, enjoy all right here we are as voice over george so as i talked about before this first attempt is a failed attempt but i decided to show the process one because i didn't record the sketch process for the final and two because i think showing mistakes are important to show that nobody's perfect so throughout the sketch process i'll talk a little more in depth about the design since towards the coloring process i talk a lot about watercolor tips and uh more detail pieces but yeah, so a, a good starting tip is to use a colorful under sketch instead of using like a graphite under sketch. The reason for that being is it's really easy for pencil to show through watercolor. So if you do something colorful, it'll help. So if it does show through, it doesn't seem so out of place. I did end up using graphite for the second sketch because I had to trace this sketch and you can see it through the fins, which is really disappointing. I do fix it in the digital version, but unfortunately in the original you can see through so let's start off with the basics of their design something that I do for a lot of the fish merfolk because I'll add fins to the arms and I think this in my brain helps with aerodynamicism it makes it so they can swim faster and also break easier is that true I don't know fins on the neck and the sides are kind of just aesthetic same with like the or I should say gills sorry gills on the neck and the sides and the fins on the ears same thing that's less purpose and more just aesthetic. I think it helps communicate that she's supposed to be a fish as well as separating her a little bit more from human. Another thing you'll notice is for my merfolk, I don't put breasts on them. And this is on purpose because I don't find that they would need it, they're fish. Uh, I think it's kind of weird to give mermaids, or merfolk I should say, breasts. But I guess when people are doing more half human, half fish, I can understand that. But mine are supposed to be all fish with humanoid features if that makes sense so that's why i i go for more alien looking but yeah right here i'm going on to add an element that i do end up changing the hand originally obscures the face to kind of get off a hoity like ho ho kind of position but i changed that because later like i said this is a failed mistake because that face area is really cluttered so later i go through and i change it to add a little bit more space so it's a little easier to line and looks and communicates a little bit better it's a little clearer but i also have trouble letting things obscure my designs just because i'm a designer more than i am an illustrator i like my design showing through so if something obscures it i tend to try and change it <laughs> not great but it's a habit i'm working on so yeah i got most of the things sketched out as you can see she's wearing a lot of jewelry specifically things like shoulder pads which i talked about earlier how in thai culture it's custom to cover up your shoulders so i thought gold shoulder pads would be a really cool way to communicate that she wears a lot of jewelry because in merfolk society beta fish are the upper class so their careers consist of things like modeling as well as fighting so since they're fighting fish their whole thing is that they fight professionally and they're, they try to accumulate things like scars and trophies from their battles. You'll see that she'll have a lot of scars, but never in places that obstruct her quote unquote beauty. If you get a scar in their society that obstructs your beauty, like tattered fins, one going through the eye, or something that obstructs like your facial features, that is considered a disgrace and a loss. So I wanted to give I wanted to give her scars and not important places to show she's a very renowned fighter. And I think, I, th I don't know, I think that'd be interesting if you see merfolk that have the tattered fins are outcasted by their society, whereas the ones with the really cool looking scars are considered the best. 
I don't know if that's if that's cool or not. But anyways, here's where it all starts to go wrong. As you saw earlier, I used a kneaded eraser to fade out the line so I could start the liner. Kneaded erasers are great. Highly recommend if you do things like watercolor. Make sure you get a good quality one, otherwise it will fall apart. But they'll last a while and easy to clean in my opinion. But yes, so I'm very heavy handed. I talk about that a little bit later. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it, but I am a very heavy handed person. And as you can see, I'm pushing down way too hard on the pen which is causing there to be no line variation and then I'm going back over it because the lines aren't very confident and it's muddying everything up it's making it look bad blurry not uniform and because there's so many details in that one area combined with these unconfident muddy lines it really just ruins the entire piece and I try really hard to push myself through and to get it done but I do end up eventually realizing that it's not going anywhere and I would like to redo it. While we get through that, I could talk a little bit more about the design. I gave her these little bulbs at the end of the eyelashes again to add a fun otherworldly look and to draw attention to the more feminine aspects of her design because I did want the betta fish to be more feminine just because stereotypically they are more quote unquote beautiful. Do I necessarily agree with that? No, but I just feel like it's a great way to communicate a beta fish into a merfolk design and we're still doing a little bit of lining i added a a collar type choker thing that's also going to be made of gold i do kind of wish i added a little bit more ornamentation to her design but then again my other merfolk oc is supposed to be royalty and she has more ornamentation so maybe it's a good thing i didn't add as much Another problem I came across was that the head was just too small for the body, which really, you can tell, it's just kind of awkward. It looks really, really small. Ooh, camera movement. <laughs> and it messes up the composition as well as the fact that the whole illustration is too low on the page and there's nothing to draw the eye to the right side of the page. Here you can see I decided to change from a bun to a braid so I can add some visual interest to the other side of the page and balance out the composition but unfortunately it is way too far gone to save it like this so yeah and i'll talk a little bit more about that right here i don't know what to do i think if I had a light box, I would just get a light box and maybe retrace it. Maybe the paper's too small. Problem is, I really like this paper. It might just be too small for what I'm trying to do because these these details are really small, like compared to my fucking hand. The paper is about as big as my hand, and again, I'm really heavy-handed, so these tiny details with my style kind of hurt my hand. Um. So like even this 0.3 brush, I think because my wrist also hurts, you can see the my lines aren't showing a whole lot of confidence right now, so I'm going back over them a lot, which is causing it to just look muddy. I don't quite, I think, so I have other traditional pieces that came out a lot more successfully. These two, for example. I think it's because they're a lot closer that makes sense they're a lot closer to the the proverbial camera camera because these are body up whereas uh, this one is a full body so it makes it a little bit difficult because it's going to be smaller details but I really wanted to make these traditional but that was a really big important part for me so what I might do is finish the liner off camera just because it, it is it is hurting my wrist quite a bit and I don't wanna I don't wanna give up on making it traditional, but I am definitely struggling. This is like angled weird. So we'll see what happens. I'll give it another try off camera so there's a little less pressure and I can get a little closer to it. Uh, and if you see that if you see me come back with a freshly line art piece, that means I did it. And if you see it cut over to me doing this 
digitally, that means I tried and I wasn't able to make it work. And I switched to digital. So let's see what happens. All right, everybody. So I said that if uh, I decided to try again with some traditional, that we'd come back and see the line art. And yeah, so I, just to give context, I'm very heavy-handed. Uh, sorry, I got distracted. I'm very heavy-handed. So uh, digital, traditional art's a little harder for me than digital art. It hurts my wrist a lot. So I might have to just do line art off screen for a while or find a better way to accommodate my wrists. Uh, I'm not super sure on what to do about that yet, but we're just going to get into it. And I'm going to start telling you some fun watercolor tips before I start. Uh, always make sure you have a clean paper towel <laughs> to work with. Uh, I've been practicing painting, so, you know. But a trick I learned is always make sure you have two mugs. One to clean off your brushes in in the first pass to get all the color off. The other one to make sure you have a clean mug to dip and take water from and also give your brushes a nice second wash to make sure that they're clean. And I got my brushes over here. This is some cheapy set I got off Amazon. I'm using a Winsor Newton student grade palette that I'm pretty sure is a knockoff that I bought online. Uh, and then I got this from Michaels. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tape down our little Merbet. And I'll probably speed it up from this point. So hope you enjoy the process. Welcome back to VoiceOver Town. And we're gonna start off here by taping this piece down. I love the untaping bit because I love seeing the border get revealed, but God do I hate taping these things down. It's just tedious as you can see here. I'm struggling with the tape. I also didn't put as much time as I usually do to making sure that the border is lined up. I just wanted to get it taped down so I can paint it. I think I was very frustrated after the first failed attempt. I do go back later and digitally fix up the borders to make it a little more even. Here I am, I'm cutting out the little overlapping bits. I do like to have pieces that overlap the border to add a nice interesting effect. It's surprising that I am this good with a knife. I have stabbed myself on accident many times. One time I got it in the side of my knee and there was no blood so I thought I was fine and then I, once I pulled the knife out sat there for a moment nothing happened and then it was just gushing it was a lot so ever since then i've been very careful with exacto knives and i'm not really allowed near sharp objects because i'm stupid and clumsy uh i just got a notification for the kissing booth three i guess they decided to delay the release because to all the boys i love before three came out and it was a banger Anyways, I'm going in right now and I'm coloring the skin. Good tip I have is to make sure you uh, go through with your watercolor in big chunks. That way you can get a more even color. And the way I mix up paint is I grab paint from the palette and dilute it a lot with the water. That way I get a thinner coat of the pigment in the water. It helps there to be less dry time in between layers. Yes, I do have to layer it up a little bit more, but because I use cotton paper, I don't worry too much about layers. If you do use a cheaper paper, or a thinner paper or whatever I would recommend not layering too much because it will eat away at your paper but I'm on I'm on the good side I'm okay so I don't really worry too too much about bleeding because I think it's a part of the charm of watercolor is the the watercolor bleeding out from the lines and mixing up just a tiny bit not a lot but just a little bit so don't stress out too much about that if you want a cleaner medium, I wouldn't suggest watercolor. It's not really meant to be clean, but I'm sure others would not share my opinion, so you don't have to listen to me. Another good tip for highlights. So it's a lot easier to leave a white space than it is to add highlights later. It's not like acrylic where you can go over it with a lighter color. You could also, if you want to do colored highlights, you can put down a base, the base color of what you want. Like if I wanted to do a pink highlight, I'd put down a very thin layer of pink and then do the exact method I'm doing here. But I'm leaving this white space to function as the highlight. And if you want to make it even more in depth, what you could do is when you layer on the second layer of color to make it more pigmented, you leave another space so that that lighter layer of color is right next to those white highlights. It creates a fun gradient. I don't do that 
in these pieces. I do it a tiny bit, but not on purpose. So I did lose a bit of the footage because the camera was not focusing and it was just irritating to watch, so I just cut it out. But all I did was color in the tail and I'm gonna end up redoing it here to deepen the color so you'll see my process anyways. Right now I'm just adding gradients to the fins. The way I like to add gradients is I will uh, you know, get my color and put it down and then clean off my brush and take some water and then spread it out. Now is this the best method? method? Not necessarily. Uh, a lot of people would disagree with me on this method because it does sometimes, if you don't do it right, create a patchy look, but I kind of like that. Another way to do it would be to put down a, a full wet wash and then insert your pigment towards the top and let it kind of bleed out or to move it around that way. This is just for one color. For two colors, I do pretty much the same thing. I put down the two colors and then mix them together with water in the middle. But again, my method isn't necessarily the correct way, just the way that I do it. And here you'll start to see those pencil lines I was talking about earlier. The charcoal, not charcoal, sorry, graphite lines show up in those bottom fins and it really does kind of ruin the piece. So I definitely recommend using uh, some kind of colored base like a colored pencil or something or whatever those pencils are that I can't seem to remember the name of. The color scheme I went with is very reminiscent of a classic betta fish as well as being one of my favorite color schemes to use. I just really like a gradient of orange to purple. Something about it is very pleasing. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm not doing much. I'm just coloring stuff in. Sorry, you can hear the page turning. I'm checking my notes. I'm doing blue eyes as well as blue little gems for the rings to add a little pop of color. Something that still goes within the color scheme, but is contrasting enough so you notice it. You don't notice it too much in the final piece because I do add black irises, which is unfortunate. But, you know. Sorry, I'm just reading my notes. This part's kind of boring just because it's just doing it's just layering you know but as you can see this time i didn't forget the back fin so that's cool and right now i'm coloring in the scars to deepen the color i want the scars to stand out like i said they're of importance to the character so i want the scars to stand out so i made them a purple like the hair that way they're still within the color scheme but you can tell them apart from the skin and that also, I guess, implies that her blood is purple, but I didn't really do that in the blushing. Maybe I should have. I didn't think too hard about that. The blushing, because the face is really cluttered, I kind of just did a little bit deeper red to make it easier. And as you can see here, I'm just deepening the gradients, add that little bit of orange to the tail part to make it, I don't know, just a little more dynamic. And I'm also adding a gradient to the tail. Gradients are a great way to add depth to a flat color not always but most of the time some other advice I, I use very thin layers I don't use a whole lot of water and I don't use a whole lot of pigments so that it's very pale I guess I don't know the word, but it's it's not very opaque right away. And this is why I go up and I add multiple layers. It just helps so the paper doesn't get eaten away and so I can have a better overall color. And the dry times are less. Also, I'm doing the gold right now. The gold is kind of tricky. I'm not very good at it. I mixed a little bit of brown to desaturate it and make it look a little more gold. Oh, it kind of looks copper. If you want more realistic looking gold, I've heard you can use green in the shadows, but I wasn't really going for that, so. Uh, <laughs> Here I'm going through and adding a little bit of blue to deepen up the hair and add some shadow. Something that I like to do instead of mixing paint together, like mixing the blue in with the purple, I like to do layers to overlay it. Kind of like an overlay layer, funnily enough. It helps me to have more control over how the colors are going to react with each other, as well as create an interesting placement instead of just doing it all over the same color. And you'll see me do that with this pink here. I'm gonna put a little bit towards the top of her head to add some change in the hair as well as on the braid. 
it just adds some more visual intrigue and to make it so it's not just a flat color kind of like adding a gradient without adding a gradient if that makes sense and then I'm just coloring in the gills made them that deeper red to match with the top part of the tail doing some of that blushing I was talking about earlier and this piece is a lot more saturated in person for some reason on camera it looks a lot lighter than it actually is which is unfortunate using a little bit of purple in the shadows to help differentiate the shadow from the gradient because when you add a lot of gradients it can get a little hard to tell which part is supposed to be shadow and which part is supposed to be gradient if you go for soft shadows I do a mix in my watercolor pieces of soft shadows and hard shadows. In my digital pieces, I do go for a blended layer along with a hard shadow, but because it's a little harder to achieve that without layers, I kind of just mostly do hard shadows in my watercolor pieces with blending where I can. You could also see that I leave little pieces uncolored on the edges. It's to add, just like I did with the hair, a highlight. It's an easier way than having to go through with the gel pen and manually add that, because when you go in with the gel pen, you also have to reline it. Getting close to the colored pencil part, I believe. I think it's gonna happen right now. Yep, I let the piece dry for a bit. And I went in with some colored pencils. Now this is the only piece that I use colored pencils on. After this, I kind of realized that while I do think colored pencil on top of watercolor paintings is a good technique to add some fun texture, I just don't think my pieces needed them. I think the texture was fine without it, so you don't see me using them in the future. I also, just to be controversial, hate watercolor pencils. I meant to say colored pencils, but it came out of my mouth too fast. I hate colored pencils. I think it's a really tedious medium and it requires a lot of extra work for an effect you can get with other mediums. If you're a watercolor pencil artist or a colored pencil artist, that's cool. Good for you. I'm not saying your art's bad and I'm not saying art made with this medium is bad. I just personally think it's a lot of extra work for not enough payoff. But like I said before, I'm very heavy handed and struggle with wrist pain. So that could be a heavy contributor to why I absolutely despise the medium because God does it make my wrists hurt like hell. I'm not censoring that because that is not bad enough of a word for me to put in the work to do so. <laughs> but yeah, so we're done with the colored pencil and I'm going in to do the background. Because she is a more saturated color and also a little bit deeper of a color, I wanted to go back in for the background and do a light blue that way she stood out but I didn't want her to not seem like she was a part of the environment so I found a nice mid-tone and I add a gradient later because adding a gradient is a really easy way to up upgrade your backgrounds to make them look a lot better without a whole lot of work and I think here I had a little bit of a different blue to kind of make the watercolors different from each part of the piece. I do that for a little bit of the others. It's to add, again, more visual intrigue to make it seem like it's different parts of the water. Not really supremely interesting, just going in around the character. Some people will do the background first. That way it's a little bit easier, which I understand. I really do. <laughs> and here I am doing the, you know, gradient, like I said earlier. I can hear a little bit of the audio from this clip coming through. I'm going to have to go through and mute it because it sounds like a chipmunk in my ear. And again, make sure you leave this enough time to dry before you add any elements onto the back. Otherwise, your ink or watercolor will run and it'll make it look muddy. If I hadn't let it dry properly, then this gel pen would have definitely run and it would have looked terrible and because it's not a medium you can layer over easy there would have been nothing I could do about it but I did give it enough time to dry so I went in with some fun colored gel pens and I gave it some coral in the background to further solidify that it's supposed to be the ocean the main focus of these illustrations is the design so I didn't really focus too hard on 
placement of the background or placing them in the space. It was just kind of supposed to be there to tell you where they are and communicate a little bit more about what kind of animal they are. I didn't exactly research a lot of locations for where these fish are in terms of ocean space. And again, you see me using colored pencil here, but in the future illustrations, I just use watercolor because I really don't like colored pencil. But yeah, I just color it in, make it look like an ocean. I do go back later with some white gel pen, not on camera because I didn't record it. But I go back and I, I touch it up. Let's take your tape off and see what it looks like with the border. I'm not gonna do go too crazy with the white gel pen, just in some places add a fun little bit of fun highlight and then also go through and clean up some of the line art, darken it again. This is stupid. It's my first time doing watercolor in a while, so again, I really hate the way that they turn out traditionally. I still want to sew on this prints. I will just redo them digitally. Didn't really think about doing the border evenly. I'm stupid. I think I did, but then I just fucked up these two. Pretty sure these other two are pretty even. It's not always the smartest person. Smartest cat. Maybe I'll crop it. There she is before I throw any uh, white gel pen on her. I'll show off a final piece in my outro. Picture this. You're me. You film six videos because you forgot to film outros for all four of your mermaid series and intros for two of them. So you refill them, refill, refilm them in August and you didn't realize that your big fan in the background was on full blast the entire time. And since you don't have the noise reduction add on and have no money, you're stuck with it. So I'm refilming. Anyways, this is the outro for my beta fish video. I hope you enjoyed watching the process. I enjoyed making it. Here is the finished piece with the white highlights and everything. If you have any names, feel free to suggest them down below because I have yet to name any of my merfolk. Uh, if you like the merfolk finished piece, I do sell them as prints, physical prints and stickers. It does have a little bit of a touch up so it will look a little bit different than the original because I go back through and digitally touch them up. But they are available on my Etsy down in the description below, along with my other social media, which you will find is Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I post on TikTok once a day. I post on Instagram once a week. I post here once a week. I post on Twitter when I remember it exists. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. <laughs> Sorry. And I hope you're having a wonderful day slash night, whatever it is, wherever you are.